good morning from Green Island. A bit of a cloudy winter's day, but there's nothing like the carpet of snowdrops to lift one's spirits at the beginning of the year. Galanthus is the name for snowdrops. Galanthus nivalis is the single common snowdrop. We've got an example just here. And the name Galanthus uh, means milky from the Greek for milk and nivalis means snow-like. So what an appropriate name. Galanthus nivalis, single snowdrops. And then right next to it here, We've got Galanthus nivalis flora plano. Flora plano, plentiful flower or petals, so these are the double versions. So these are the basic snowdrops that you will see most people's gardens. But over the last uh, few years in particular, snowdrops have become a bit of a collector's item. Um, you may have heard of huge extortionate prices being fetched for even just one bulb. I think the record was about five or six years ago the Galanthus Golden Fleece, and that sold for, I think, £1,430 on eBay, just for one single bulb. I swore I would never start looking at different snowdrops, um, but I'm afraid my curiosity got the better of me. And it's become now a very expensive hobby, but I can understand this group of people that have become known as Galanthophiles. Uh, snowdrop, it's a hobby to go around looking at snowdrops and different varieties of them. Snowdrops um, cross-pollinate, so they, they self-seed everywhere, and this is how you end up with these huge carpets of snowdrops that you see. And they don't come true. The genes mix, so you end up with all sorts of different varieties in the flowers. I have started collecting them, and I'll show you some of those in a few moments. Um, but that's why it's given rise to so many different varieties. And they don't actually reproduce terribly quickly, not like bluebells and daffodils, where you can plant a few and in a very short time you'll have a lot of them. Snowdrops, some of them, can be a little bit slower to reproduce, although they do, as you see, clump up nicely. Um, and what I've done here at Green Island, when we moved here over 25 years ago, there was just a small, um, narrow band of snowdrops either side of the drive as you come up. And over the years, I've spent a couple of days every year just lifting, dividing the clumps after they've flowered and spreading them around a little bit further afield. So now you can see we just have carpets of snowdrops right throughout the woods, which on a day like this is absolutely fantastic. It's definitely, the snowdrop is definitely a sign that there's new beginnings, the spring is on its way, and it, it's had a symbolic meaning for centuries. Um, and I think particularly this year, after the COVID crisis, it's particularly appropriate that, that this is a, a new beginning, start of better things to come. So why not come and have a look at the snowdrops at Green Island, just to lift your spirits, if nothing else. Okay, so we've come into the woods here. I just wanted to show you this snowdrop here. Really large flowers, but the defining feature is this long uh, dangling stalk it hangs from. This one is called Galanthus magnet. And just in the slightest bit of breeze, they seem to dangle beautifully and move. Something like this, Galanthus magnet, will probably only set you back a couple of pounds for a snowdrop. And if you're thinking of starting with snowdrops in your garden, there are some varieties that you can choose that are definitely much more superior to the straight Nivalis or Nivalis flora flana. Hello, Lola. <laughs> a sweet little snowdrop called Galanthus warrenoii. Quite different. You'll notice the shape and the colour of the leaves. They're broader, quite short, and a much brighter green than the traditional steely glaucous blue of the snowdrop leaf. They tend to flower slightly later than the straight nivalis and um, probably cost you a couple of quid as well. Okay so this is another widely available uh, variety that you can get hold of, Galanthus galatea it's called. Lovely tall strong growing stems, beautiful large white flowers, go on for a nice long time and it clumps up relatively quickly as well. So a really good strong grower for the garden. So we're near the pond area at the moment, a very woodlandy, shady area. Snowdrops will grow in full sun or they'll grow happily in full shade. But contrary to belief, they don't actually like to be dried out during the summer. 
So if you put them too close to very large trees, they may not do as well as they would out in an open situation. Snowdrops also do not like to be um, dried out like traditional bulbs. So it's much better to buy them, as we call it, in the green. So just after they've, been, they've flowered, a lot of snowdrop growers will lift the clumps and they'll be offered for sale in the green. This is a much, much better way to buy them. You don't want to buy the bulbs when they've been allowed to dry out in the summer and then plant them because a lot of them will actually fail. The other thing they don't like is they don't like to be on their own. They get lonely. Snowdrop bulbs like to be planted in a little clump of two, three, four bulbs together. So if you buy them in the green, a big clump, don't think that you're going to have an, a, a bigger area covered by separating out each bulb um, individually and planting them. A lot of them will be eaten by mice or they just will rot or they'll just sulk and not do very well. Much better to keep them in their little clumps of two or three bulbs and pop them in in little groups. They work really well here as we've got them with a carpet of aconites, winter aconites and this beautiful hellebore here which I love, it's called winter sunshine and I just think it makes such a cheery combination on a dull winter's day like this. Here we have another little clump of uh, snowdrops which we've got here, Iris reticulata. But these snowdrops, you'll notice, are slightly different on the outside of the petal. We've got some green stripes. This one is called uh, Galanthus virida peachy, and again, easily available, widely available, and it clumps up nice and quickly. Just around the corner from virida peachy, we have another really strong grower here, Atkins Eye, this one's called. Lovely, big, big flowers make a really bold statement. So here we have another one that I planted a few years ago, which has clumped up beautifully. This one's called Galanthus plicatus. There's a large collection of them where I've lifted and split them. So amongst these plicatus, bending down here, I've just noticed this little group of snowdrops here, which I've never seen before. And this one you'll see has got a little green marking on the outside. This is a rogue seedling, uh, which has obviously uh, developed here at Green Island, possibly with plicatus, um, crossing with Virida Peachy just on the other side and this is how all these new varieties arise. We may even have to try and get this one registered as, uh, and give it a name of Green Island or something appropriate like that. So this is another combination I absolutely love, the snowdrops and the cyclamen. The brighter red the better. This is cyclamen coom, the spring flowering cyclamen. So I'm allowing you in today. This is my special snowdrop collection, so exclusive access. Um, I think I've got about 132 varieties. I'm, I'm almost ashamed to admit that now. Um, but I've collected them over the last five, six years and they're starting to trump up now. These are ones that have been purchased as individual bulbs, usually at, well, I won't say the most I've paid for one, but certainly not as much as £1,430. But I'll show you some of the, the variations in the varieties you can get here. Um, so we've got, you can see instantly the different size and shape of leaves and the different colour of leaves. But if we look more closely at the petals. Okay, so this tiny little uh, gold one here is Ecuson d'Or. And this one, which I really love, the, the green markings on the outside are replaced with the, with the yellow. And this one's called Galanthus Bitter Lemons, which I think is just a lovely one. Next to it, we've got one of these um, hybrids with the green markings on the outside. This one is actually called Lucy. This is a lovely one um, with wide, wide glossy green leaves and these lovely lantern shaped flowers, Augustus it's called. So I have to just show you this one. It has slightly gone past its best now, but this one is Galanthus Golden Fleece. And this is the one I was telling you about that sold on eBay for a single bulb for £1,430. Happy to say that I did not pay anywhere near that amount for my one, but it has now got two shoots. So I suspect there's two bulbs under the ground now.
One I purchased last year and I decided when I heard the name that I just had to have one. It's called Fiona's Gold. It is past its best now, but you can see the little yellow markings on the inside. What we've got here with very, very green markings is called Green Tear, with the green on the outside of the petals and on the inners. Another really interesting little snowdrop here. You could almost be forgiven for thinking it wasn't a snowdrop. This one's called Alba Claw. This is another one of my favourites, uh, Galanthus South Haze. You can see the green markings are like a, a line running down the outside of the outer petals, down the midrib, sorry, of the outer petals. Um, so lots of green on those. And just next to it, we've got another similar uh, one called Trimposta. This one I'm showing you here is called Galanthus Mrs. Thompson. You'll notice on this one that there's more than the normal three petals on the outside. And this variety actually has the ability to throw up flowers with either four, five or six outer petals. But either way, it's still a very showy, good, strong growing snowdrop. This one always makes me smile because it's called Galanthus Grumpy. And you can see from the markings on the inside, it just looks like a grumpy old man's face. I could stay here all morning showing you all the different snowdrops in my collection, but I think I've given you an idea of some of the, the range of different varieties that you can find now. And also uh, given you an insight as to why when you start looking at the, the beauty of these little flowers, how it can become so addictive and it's so easy to become a galanthophile. It can be a very expensive hobby, be warned, but I, I can't tell you how much pleasure it gives me at this time of year in January and February, being able to look forward to these flowers coming and clumping up and looking better and stronger each year. It's possible to have snowdrops flowering right from October right through to April. The Regini, Galanthus Regini Olgai species and their hybrids start flowering in the autumn. So you get a, a, just a taster before Christmas of what's to come afterwards. And some of the later flowering varieties will be flowering well into April. You can see these little ones still just popping up and coming into bud now. So this year I urge you to just look a little bit more carefully at the snowdrops and see, wonder at the beauty of their different flowers and different shapes and different markings. So enjoy your snowdrops. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is just show you the process for splitting and dividing these snowdrops. As I said, it's best if they're done in the green. You can do them now, but really better to wait till the flowers have just gone over. So what I'll do is uh, select a nice established clump like this one. Just put the fork in gently and ease them out of the ground. We've got tree roots tangled up with this here, so it's not coming out that easily, but there we go. So just shake the soil off a little bit. And then you can just break the clump with your hands, just like that, gently pull it apart. And I can break this one into several sections. And then what I do is I'll always plant one clump back in where the original has come out from. like that and then we can just spread these ones around nearby this is a nice little double one we've got here firm them in nicely Now, I've had a lot of people have asked me um, why their snowdrops aren't doing well. They've bought lots and planted them in the autumn. And as I explained, um, often they won't grow if they've been bare rooted. But even if they've bought them in the green, some people have still failed with them. And that could be because squirrels and mice are eating the bulbs before they've had a chance to grow. So what I do tend to do with all my special snowdrops, and you could try if you're having problems getting them established, is planting them in baskets. 
So we're going to go to the potting shed now and I'll show you what I do with all my special snowdrops. Okay, so into the potting shed here. And what I've got here is some aquatic baskets. You can buy these in the garden centre or get them on eBay. And by planting the bulbs in these, it allows the roots to grow out into the soil. Uh, it also means you can label them and lift them up knowing exactly you've got the right ones. But importantly, it stops mice and voles and animals burrowing in from the sides. If you have problems with squirrels, once you've planted them, you can actually put um, a layer on the top of, of chicken wire or netting or something to keep the vermin out of the top. But I've, I've successfully grown uh, my, my special collection in these for years and never lost any to mice. Now, potting compost for these, um, they like a, a, a free draining soil. So what I tend to do is make up a mix of this, which is a third John Innes compost. Um, some people say number two or number three. I've got number three. A third just multi-purpose compost and a third perlite. So mix that up and it makes a, quite a free draining soil like compost. So a bit of that into the bottom of the basket and then a little clump of snowdrops or if you've splashed out and bought a special one or two, pop them into the basket like that. And then pack it round with some more of our compost. Turn it down. Okay, so that's all ready to go into the ground now. Last but very important um, thing to do is label the pot very carefully because you're bound to forget where you've planted them or the variety it was. So, pen and paper. So, we've got Palanthus nivalis. Okay, no. Now, the beauty of being able to do this is you can bury the label entirely and it won't get uh, washed away by the rain or fade in the sun. So the labels are still good up to five, six years later. I've dug them up to split and as I say, the labels have still been good. So there you have your animal proof snowdrops. <laughs>